Evangelist Mentor Academy, course number one, more than a calling. This course is going to look at four ideas. It is number one, full-time evangelism. What that means, when you read that book, you'll get a full description, There's some worksheets at the back of that free book that you can download on the PDF. Some will download it as a Canva and you can print it out from the PDF and you can print it out from the Canva and you can use that worksheet to go over these ideas of preparing what it means to be a full-time evangelist. We're going to go through a lot of coursework on that, but this book more than a calling describes that in a summary detail. Second point is we're going to look at that is to be or not to be called. There's a calling. What does the scripture say about the calling? Third point is where in the world should I go? That's a great question. A lot of people ask, I don't know where to go. Where am I supposed to go? We're going to look at that. And then fourth is your personal testimony, because that's the greatest tool that you can use in sharing the gospel. And that's the tool that's going to carry you through the different regions that you want to be involved in, in ministering the gospel. No one can argue with that. Devil can't take that away from you. And so we're going to look at those four ideas. So just like to give a big shout out, big welcome to all the students that are here and you are participating in our course. And we're so excited about what God's going to do in your life. So welcome students, EMA worksheet. So I'd like to, first of all, please bring your completed worksheets to the one-on-one -on -one mentoring session with myself, Dr. Tony Rizzo. For each course, you want to create a specific goal. You can begin implementing in your life. So like how to become an evangelist. What's my personal testimony? Any of those four points in this first course. Identify a scripture verse or passage you can commit to memory for each class. Find some scripture verses that go with your testimony or what it means to be called. List practical steps to reach your specific goal for each class. That's an important step also. And then finally, use the extra space to record any ideas or tips that you think will be applicable in your career as an evangelist. So we're really going to get into these four points now as we consider these things in EMA more than a calling. So excited that you're joining with us here today. So let's get into it. So let's think about four ideas underneath full-time evangelism. So I like to say that underneath full-time evangelism, you have to wear a lot of hats. And these hats are going to be like, I'm going to be involved with local church. I'm going to be involved with youth ministries. I'm going to be involved with children's or adult ministries. And these hats are, you're going to wear, you're going to get involved. And what happens is this local church is going to form you and and put a, a, a fire on you to purify you to see if you are comfortable with ministry work and then also doing evangelism in that ministry work. So to be an evangelist, you need to have a sending church. A good sized church is essential for your prayer support and financial support and great encouragement because as an evangelist, there will be challenges and dark days that could discourage you. So these challenges in dark days can be very challenging in the work of full-time evangelism. And you need to think about how you can be involved in that. And when you get going through those trials, what, what fire will burn in your life and what purifying will come in your life and how you can go through those trials with a sending church, praying behind you, standing behind you, and of course, financially supporting you. Then missions conferences is the third area of what it means to be a full-time evangelist. You're going to have to be involved in finding churches to search to find that, that want to support missionaries so they can help you to be a full-time evangelist and they can financially help you because finances are huge in full-time evangelism. You got to have finance to be able to help you to do your work. I mean, if you don't have finances, how are you going to be able to support yourself and all these different things? Huh? 
How's that going to work? So you need to have these finances to help you with all these different works, right? That's these three points we just looked at. The local church startup, a sending church, and looking for missions conferences. These three ideas of working in the church, having a church support you, and then looking for other churches to support you is huge in preparing to go into the ministry as a full-time evangelist. One of the things you have to do is you have to have this book ready with every breath I take. What is ready with every breath I take? That's a book that describes all the points that we're going to discuss in this course. All the courses that we have, the nine courses for Evangelism Mentor Academy, this book is going to cover each chapter and they're going to break them down in great detail to show you what this church, what it means to be in full-time evangelism. So you need to check out this book, Writing With Every Breath I Take. You need to scan that on there. Go to my website, tonyandfriends.org. Go to the bookstore and buy the book. Super cheap, 99 cents. We do have shipping. Get that underneath your belt. Start reading that because each course is going to each chapter of that book is going to be related to the course that we're taking. So you're going to have to have that chapter. You're going to have to have that book to be able to take this course. Roles of an evangelist, very important because roles of an evangelist have four ideas that we look at when we think about, we have apostles. The word apostle isn't like one of the 12 apostles. They, they in Ephesians 4 was a office that God gave to the church. Those 13 evangelists, uh, 13 apostles um, took the gospel and planted churches and started the movement of Christianity and churches. Jesus Christ commissioned them. So leaving that role, Roles of evangelists using the word apostle, not as one of the apostles that starts the church, but using just the strict definition of the word apostle, which means sent one, sent one with a message, not an apostle that starts in the local church, like in Ephesians four, but one that takes the gospel and just has a message that wants to give to each other. Messengers, Mark 16, 15, we are messengers taking the gospel out throughout the world. And that's what we're all about, um, taking the gospel throughout the world. And that's what you want to be involved in. Third is teachers, 1 Timothy 4, 10 through 11. An evangelist is one that teaches. 1 Timothy chapter 4, 10 through 11 tells us we should be a teacher. But Ephesians 4 tells us that God's given the evangelist to the church for the edification of the saints. So we teach, we edify, we build up, and we, we get involved in helping people to understand the scriptures and what it means to be an evangelist. Then fourth, being a servant. The word servant really, the word deacon means servant. The word minister means to serve. And we are servants. We are servants of the Lord. We are servants of the gospel. In John 12, 20, it says, if any man serve me, let him follow me. You see, we're going to be following the Lord Jesus and giving the gospel. And we're going to be servants. And if you're not interested in being a servant, you might as well just end this course right now, right here. It doesn't mean to be called. It's a good point. We're going to look at that, figure out how God calls us. You know, video, Free Science, God is calling you to be an evangelist on YouTube. It's underneath the channel, Tony and Friends, Dr. Tony Rizzo. I want to encourage you to go to that channel and watch this video, Three Science, God is calling you to be an evangelist. Now, these three signs are ideas that come out of the scripture so we we want to be real careful that we don't get out of the scriptures always stay in the scripture by the way when you go to youtube you need we need subscribers so part of the evangelism mentor academy program is subscribing to youtube and there is a membership subscription if you would like to join that for 4.99 you can see different videos that we are doing in how to share the gospel behind the scenes in the city you're going to see some some footage, some raw footage that's unbelievable. And you want to join up as a member of YouTube, Doc, Tony and Friends, Dr. Tony Rizzo on our YouTube channel and check that out and join. Uh, there's plenty of videos on the free site with the YouTube, just subscribing there. This is one of them. But the membership gives you a, 
inclusive with the whole course that we're doing, this background ideas of sharing the gospel that we don't make public. So the calling points back to scripture. That's what it does. Points back to scripture. And you can't have a calling without the scripture being in agreement with what you are doing. So a calling, you know, scripture verse for myself was John uh, Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And you see, that scripture verse told me that if I serve the Lord, that's the calling, then God's going to take care of me and all those. Then confirmed by the church, the church is going to realize that you are definitely wanting to go into evangelism. and You'll be always sharing the gospel to people, maybe doing it more in the church than you should be, if that's possible. And uh, the church is going to say, yeah, you need to go out into the highways and byways and compel them to come in. The church is going to see that. And then, of course, the Holy Spirit is going to be working in your life. You got to go out and share the gospel. Holy Spirit's moving in your life. And you will not have a problem with understanding that. And then you'll be affirmed by a spiritual advisor. So you need to get spiritual advisors in your life. And so these spiritual advisors are going to bring wisdom to your knowledge. See, wisdom is applying knowledge. You get a lot of knowledge in this course and you have wisdom. I want to uh, be a spiritual advisor in your life. You can have many spiritual advisors. As an evangelist, being in evangelism 42 years and seeing thousands of people come to know the Lord and doing thousands of crusades. Listen, I can have a part of encouraging you. That's why we had the evangelist mentor academy to be an advisor to you and that's why we want you to go and pick out a date and time on our calendar that you can sign up to meet with me you can meet with me as often as you want but one every three courses i would like to meet with you so that'll be at least three times by the finish this course and you can talk to me about all the things that are going on in your life bring the worksheets and uh so we can go over those ideas of what you've been writing in the book and in the worksheet. So the scripture tells us that we can look to the scriptures to understand what we're doing. And I like to say Ephesians 4, chapter 4, verses 11 through 12, give us real good insight onto the confirmation from the scripture. Romans 12, 6 through 8 is another one. And then confirmed by the church, your pastor should confirm your understanding the scriptures and evangelism in doing so you will have other people hold you accountable in their pursuit listen you don't have to have a four-year pastoral major at some university to be an evangelist i mean it'd be great if you did you don't have to have a 12-month bible institute program to be an evangelist it'd be great if you did if you did you can grow and learn from the word of god from your church and your pastor teaching you and then of course understanding the word of god and applying it in your life you can go forward to preach the gospel and being a full-time evangelist if God would lead you to do that. But you, you could just do learn evangelism here just to apply in your youth ministry, church's ministry, or um, ways of sharing the gospel with you know nursing homes and prisons and, and different ways like that. If you don't want to be a full-time career evangelist, that's fine. And you can learn how to do the gospel and share the gospel in this course just to apply in your, what we would call lay leadership ministry. You're going to be led by the Holy Spirit. Your gifts from the Holy Spirit will reflect your passion for evangelism. The Holy Spirit will move in your life. You'll know. The Holy Spirit will be knocking on your door. You got to give the gospel. And of course, the spiritual advisor, you need close accountability and a spiritual mentor. You just can't go out there on your own. One that you can talk to daily and weekly and no more than that. It has to be weekly. One who can help discuss and discern into your heart of hearts and your life and help you grow. It's real important. So I would say you got to get a spiritual advisor and I can be one of them. Where in the world should I go? It's a very important question. And I like to say that as you seek the Lord, you will understand where you should go. This is an idea that a lot of people are like really struggle. First of all, there's really two sides. We go anywhere our feet take us. So we're sharing the gospel right where we live at. 
If we're living in the USA, this is where God wants us at. The other side of that coin is there is a area that the Lord will put on your heart. And you got to look for confirmation that God will give you for that area. And one of those confirmations is peace in your heart for that area and those people. Another confirmation would be that you have favor with those people in your presentation of yourself and your communication of your ideas. They like talking to you. They understand you. You're one of them. Kind of reminds me of the illustration of one of the Seinfeld episodes I was watching. And George was invited by Jerry at the restaurant to eat a bowl of soup. And the bowl of soup had like strange things in it. And Jerry said, told George, you got to eat it. And, and George was like, I'm not eating that. That stuff's disgusting. And Jerry said to him, if you don't eat it, you're not one of us. <laughs> so what's the idea behind on missions? If you don't eat it, you're not one of us. If you're going to go into a field, you're not interested in eating their food and being like them you're not going to be one of us. And you see, God's going to give you a favor with those people, a desire to go into those things in those places. You know, I go into inner city Philadelphia. I can take you to like the roughest places in Philly. And listen, the people there know me. They say hi to me. I say hello to them. I counsel with them. I give them the gospel. I minister to them. And you see, I'm like a walking sidewalk pastor to them. And there's needs that they'll ask me for, prayer needs, financial needs, other kinds of needs. And me and different evangelists that I bring are ready to meet those needs. We bring food, we bring socks, we bring Bibles, we bring scripture. We are ready for that area. Why? Because we know that area. We know what they need and we go to it. So I go to Philly. There are alleyways in Philly. I can drive you down. Shortcuts around the neighborhood, and there's things that I know not to do, and there's things that I know that I can do. Okay, why? Because Philly's my field, and Philly is what I do. So I'm good with that. You take me out to the countryside. I go to a lot of visit some of my churches in the countryside, woods of Virginia and Western PA, and all these different locations that are just covered with wild animals, mountains, and minimum amount of human. Dude, I'm, I'm nervous. I'm scared at night. Why? Because I'm not familiar with that area. That's not where I'm comfortable with. I take you down the back alley of Philly. Why? I'm comfortable there. God's going to give you wisdom, understanding, guidance, and comfort when you find out the world that you want to go to. Sometimes it requires studying and understanding. Okay? Sometimes it comes natural. So you need to think about that. Right? So percent of Christians around the world, you know, we used to think that the majority of Christians around the world is in the North, but you know, the South, South America, Africa, these two continents have really increased with believers in the Lord in the last like 50 years. And the North has actually been a good area, but it, even though that was the predominant Christian area for most of contemporary Christianity, now the South, as I said, South America and Africa and even parts of Asia and Australia are increasing in their believers. So America isn't like, oh, we're the number one country with believers anymore. No, you can go to like little countries like South Korea and find huge amounts of populations of Christians. You know, that's a good question. To who am I? responsible to. I'm responsible to God. I'm responsible to my supporters. I'm responsible to the church. If you're not interested in bringing your idea of who you are underneath the authority of not only God, but hands-on in front of you, your supporters, and also the church. You see, your supporters are going to give you money to do a work because they believe in you, and the church is going to encourage you in prayer and support because they believe in you. And so you do, if you're like believing in all kinds of doctrines that are different than what the church has, that church isn't going to be standing behind you. They're going to be saying, you, you've left what we believe in, 
And, and that's not really what we're all about. So you have to be responsible and come underneath the authority of your church. So in all my displays, I put up my statement of faith all the time. I tell everybody my statement of faith. You know, I humorously say to people, what, what do you believe in? I humorously say, I'm independent, fundamental, premillennial, dispensational, pre-tribulational, KJV only, born again, Baptist, gospel, minister. That, I, I, that's how I say it. But that's not really my outline of my statement of faith. That's just a humorous positioning. You know, we ought to understand who we are and what we believe in. And that's the church who we submit ourselves to. Some people will ask you, what's your field? And so my field, I specialize in youth, missions, trips, inner city. There are three, three ideas, youth, mission trips, inner city. That's what I specialize in. Is there a location in my field? Of course. It would be Philadelphia, inner city Philadelphia. Is there more of a specific location? Of course. I live on the south side of inner city Philadelphia. God's laid on my heart. Southwest Philadelphia. God's laid on my heart. Bartram Village. God's laid on my heart. Kensington, which is North Philly. God's laid on my heart. Uh, Central Center City, uh, Market Street. I can't go everywhere in the city. And so I just named three locations that God has burdened my heart to preach the gospel with. I have favor, open doors, and I'm comfortable there. So what's my field? I just generically say Philadelphia. But I do have a specific area that I go to. So my field is youth. It's mission trips. It's inner city. It's Philadelphia. So what do I do? People would ask. I do evangelism. I evangelize. I do open air evangelism. I do youth ministry, special ministry, pulpit evangelism. See, that's what the evangelist wants to do. That's where he's at. And really, when you think about it, when you think about it, we have four steps that we really want to walk through. We understand and are where to go. Number one, we want to be responsible to our church and our supporters and to God. Number two, we're accountable to our church and to our supporters. Number three, we want to be faithful in sharing the gospel and doing the work that is set before us. And number four, we want to have a burden. So if you're thinking where to go, you want to be responsible to your church. You want to be accountable to your church supporters. You want to be faithful to God, to the work, and to your supporters. And you want to be burdened about sharing the gospel. Where are you called? Uh, this illustration of the farmer with the apple. You know, I've had friends that tell me, you know, Tony, you really uh, ought to go to South America to preach the gospel. Why, why would I do that? Well, because there's only like 10 farmers down there working an apple orchard of a million trees and they need help. So I'm coming from a location that has a million trees also, but we have a million Farmer. So we ought to take a little bit of the farmers and go to the area with only has 10 farms. You see, that's the illustration that people like to say. But I say that's not necessarily true. See, God's got to burden your heart in your area, and God's got to give you understanding of that area. You just can't go there because they only have 10 farmers showing up. You got you to gotta understand that sometimes that's the way it is. And also, God has placed us in the location where he's given us an open door to preach the gospel. And sometimes that requires going in the area where it may already have a saturation of evangelists. You know, may already have a million farmers working a million trees here. But that doesn't mean they're all doing it right. And that doesn't mean there's not an open door for you. It's not about how many people are working the gospel in an area. It's about where God has laid on your heart a burden and an open door, like we reviewed earlier, to do a work of preaching the gospel and ministry. An evangelist will not fall for the trick of saying there's only 10 farmers here. You see, that's the way it is. More than a calling. Evangelism is more than just a calling or a specific field. Evangelism needs to be the whole thing. It needs to be the whole being. If you don't have that passion, evangelism may not be the direction you should go. You got to have it in your person, your spiritual DNA. And, and that's the passion that God has given you. Listen, I created a video, Change is Possible. And this is a video about my testimony 
of how I came to trust in the Lord as my savior. And I was caught up with drugs and drinking and alcohol and all kinds of different problems and how God changed my life. Three minute video, super quick. Listen, you go to YouTube and you look up my channel, Tony and Friends, Dr. Tony Rizzo, and you look for the title, How to Change Your Life for the Better. You can trans you can ha you can transform your life. And that's my testimony. You want to check that out, watch that. Listen, I got hundreds of videos, 265 videos on preaching the gospel on my YouTube channel. But we also have a private membership on our YouTube channel that you can join for $4.99 and you can watch videos that are specialized in how to do evangelism. And these videos are for private users and those that join my ministry. It's not open to the public. Nobody can just see them. And if you want to see them, I'm telling you right now, some of those videos will blow your mind. You won't believe what's going on in the world of preaching the gospel. Right. Well, we're going to transition here and get to our last point of this book, the last chapter, your personal testimony. I like to say in this last chapter, there's three things that you can Three things that you can do for your testimony. Number one, you want to write down, and, and we gave worksheets in the book that you can download on more than a calling. You want to write down your past, what you have been saved from. I would say from my past, I was saved from, you know, drinking, drugs, and living a life of great uh, rebelliousness toward authority. And then, you know, I don't have to describe that sin in great detail. I can just give a generic statement of that. And then you want to write down the present. What happened in your life, how Jesus is working in your life? What happened in your life? You know, what led, what the circumstances led up to it? And how did you call out to Jesus and ask him to save you? And, and what scripture verses do you use for that? It's very important to use scripture verses, especially for that. And then the third point would be the future. What your hope is in now, how you want to serve the Lord and walk with the Lord. That's very important to put into your testimony. You know, a lot of us have different Bible verses that we could use. 323 is a great Bible verse that says, All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's our past. John 316, God said he loves the world. He loves me. Well, whoever believes in him should not perish. I believe in him. That's our present. And then Matthew 6:33, honor the Lord and seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things shall be added unto you. That's our future. I love Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. That's very important. That's great to put into your testimony. Hey, listen, how do you get in touch with us even more? Don't forget, you can reach out to us, youthactionministries.com is my youth action website. Of course, you're taking this course on tonyandfriends.org. And you can email me, Dr. Tony Rizzo, PhD, not just Dr. Tony Rizzo. Somebody else has that email, Dr. Tony Rizzo, PhD at Gmail. And if you'd like to come and do ministry with us here in Morton, we'd like to invite you to come with us. Just want to say thank you. God bless you. And talk to you soon.